Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is at work and this is going to be a full sharpening video. I might move the camera around a little bit, but it's basically just going to be a full sharpening video. This is the Spyderco Shaman in crew wear. Now, this uh, basically has a polished edge on it and, you know, even though it looks really good, you know, and you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't have a lot of bite. I mean, like not a lot of bite at all. So, you know, even before using it, it didn't, but I mean, it still cuts really good. It still has no issue cutting whatsoever. It could continue to cut probably for a good bit, a good while, but it doesn't have a good amount of bite into certain materials. Now, just cutting through cardboard, obviously, you know, it's it's just fine. It, you know, it wouldn't be that big of an issue, but you would get better performance out of it with a little bit more bite. Now, I, you know, I'm um, thinking that crew wear probably does better with a lower grit now i don't know that for sure so we're going to test it out and we'll go up in grit if for some reason it seems like it might need to go down a, you know a grit and not keep going up then we'll do that but let's get into it now i will say that I I have a spider so I already know how they cut and on mine I laid the edge back this one I have not laid the edge or I, I'm not going to lay the edge back um I haven't sharpened it yet so obviously I haven't laid the edge back um it's basically it looks like basically the same angle it came from the factory on that's I mean I, I don't know that for sure, but I'm not trying to go it at a specific angle or anything. I'm probably not going to lay it back like I did mine, but I'm just going to roll with it and, uh, you know, whatever degree winds up going on there goes on there. It'll definitely be one that probably cuts a little bit better than this one, but I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to lay it back like I did mine. Let's uh, bust out some stones here. So I'm going to use my Vanille Diamond Stones because this is crew wear. Crew wear, you know, is a... Uh, a good steel so the, you know with a lot of today's steels um these stones do great with them now like budget steels no you know you, you probably wouldn't want to use them um plus it just kind of be a waste of the stone even though they last so long and they're so durable um i just you know, but for most stones, I mean, they just seem to do great. Okay, so that looks like a good angle to me. Let's check it. Let me get a little rag here. Let me get a good rag really quick. Oh, I got some paper towels here. This is going to be one of those videos where I'm not going to sit there and cut it up, you know, and take out all the garbage. So you guys are probably just going to have to deal with the garbage. Oh yeah, that's a good angle. So you see just from those little swipes, this is why I love these stones. So this is the side I haven't done yet. Now this is the side I have done. And you can see it's already almost laid a full grip pattern over it. But not completely, but that was a good angle. I want to mark my finger, though, because I do want to do a good job on this. This is a Floydian's knife. Floydian, thank you very much, man, for all your support. You've been supporting the hell out of us, and I, I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Um, that seems about good right there. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing my finger into the back of it while gently touching the stone. Gave me a little spot on my finger. Now I'm going to mark that spot. Now I'm going to lay my thumb down the table and match it up. Make him kiss. Gave me a little spot. Now I'm going to trace it. This is up a little higher than normal. Normally my angles are about right there. So... A little bit higher. 
which is okay, you know, there, it's not like one angle is good for everything. For the most part, though, I will say, oh, I just want to mark my blade. I usually, I'm just going to go right there. It looks like a good spot. I, the, the angle I usually go right in the middle of my thumb is usually a great angle. And for those of you that don't know what I'm doing or what I'm even talking about here, you can go and watch many of my videos and I teach it um, how to find the angle and, you know, basically how to use it. You can watch my step-by-step um, -step video or just go into my playlist. I have a ton of sharpening videos in my sharpening playlist, but... The step-by-step -step video breaks it down really good. Okay, so it's looking good. Um, I, I need a little bit of work at the heel, and the tip isn't uh, quite hitting. So I will move the camera around a little bit to give you guys different angles as we progress through the stones because this is going to be probably a little bit of a long video, but I'm going to try to keep talking and... Give some decent information in here about sharpening. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do now to hit the tip is I'm going to have to, uh, let me see. I'm going to try to work it first. And what I mean is you'll see what I'm meaning. And then if that doesn't work, I'll try something else. But I'm going to lay it on, lay it on it. And then I'm going to go across the stone. Now I'm to the tip. So now I'm going to work it. Let's see if that did anything. Almost. Not quite, though. Let's try it again. Now, if that didn't hit it, I, I'm going to do something something else okay it's almost there i'm just going to keep working it because it's almost there because the next thing what i can do is i can lean back a little bit once i get to the tip or you can raise up higher that usually works really good there we go. We got it. And the heel. So with the heel, I'm just going to do some forward and back motions that are really close to this uh, plunge grind. And then marry it. Back and forth. Marry. Back and forth. Marry. Now let's get that tip. Let's take a look at it. It's looking really good. But no bird yet. So we got to keep working her. Holding that angle. Now what you want to try to prevent doing is leaning back. So sometimes over time through the progression or through each stone you start like getting lazy and letting it drop back and then that just makes your work that much harder so try to make sure you keep it held upright that's why the finger trick really helps and it also helps to um It helps you to hold the angle and have a memory of how high you're holding it and whether or not you're leaning it back. Because if you start leaning it back, you'll either start pushing harder on the stone or you'll feel your finger dropping like this or you'll feel the blade dropping. And I got a burr from tip. Almost to heal. Almost to heal. We're going to keep working at it. Because I want to make sure that from this stone, all my work's done. All my work's done. And then the rest of the stones are just 
icing on the cake. I think though, or I know <laughs> that this thing is going to have a lot better cutting performance with this edge angle. And before I go to the next side, I'll, I'll show the difference. Okay, we are pretty much there. There's a couple spots that don't have a burr or it's just so small I can't feel it. But it's so close and we still have so many more stones. So I'm just going to go to the next one right now, actually. So let's look at this angle difference. So you see the angle there, now you see the difference. This is the old edge, new edge, old edge, new edge. You can see how bigger the edge bevel is. Now let's do the other side. Now, one of the troubles with this can be sometimes one of the reasons why it might not be matching. You might be going like this, which this and this is going to be two different angles on the spine of the blade. Because if, I, if I'm like this versus like this, see the difference? So I want to, whichever one I, you know, do, I want to stick with or unless if it doesn't match good. If it doesn't match good, then I can adjust a little bit. Let's check it. Oh yeah, that's looking really good. It's not as big as the other side yet, but it's looking gravy. It almost makes me wonder right now if the the grind is on because it's actually a little bit, it's quite a bit smaller already. And I notice on some parts of this other side, I don't think I'm dropping. Um, I know that probably none of that made sense probably, but I'm going to drop it just a little bit. So this is what I meant by adjusting to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, instead of going this high right here, now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of dropping it just a little bit. You probably couldn't even tell what I did, but I dropped my angle just a little bit with my thumb. And I'm going to have to memorize that, that um, angle with my thumb just a little bit. Let's check it. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Let's continue. Yeah, um, man, this side's so much better than the other side. <laughs> it just is. It just looks so much, um, you know, and it's not that I'm strong hand dominant on this side either. At this point, I'm actually, sometimes it just depends on the knife. Some knives, I seem like I'm better on this side. Some knives, I'm better on this side. And then a lot of times it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the grind of the knife. Okay, we do have a burr all the way up and down. I don't want to continue to keep removing the steel, even though my angles are not 100% matched. But that's okay. We are at a very low grit, and we are going to work it out with this one. But this is such a low grit right here. I think um, you can look up micron to grit ratings, but 
I figured out that like a 40 slash 50 is basically almost a 600 grit. So it's like a 550 or something like that. Anyways, my point is, is that that this one, the one we just flipped from was 160 slash 120 micron. I think that's what it is. 125. So 160 slash 125. And now we are going to 100 slash... 80 micron so you know you can think of how low this is this is a very low grit so the way i'm going to work this out to even it up because the one side is a little bit more laid back than the other i can either a lay back the other side to match this side or b raise this side to match this side a little bit and it's not far off. I mean, it's very close at this point from what I've already done. Ooh, I'm just going to barely raise this side. So all I'm going to do is just make sure my angle is held upright perfectly as I'm going across the stone. Hopefully that works. No slouch. And slouching, I mean like this. Letting it drop back i'm gonna try to hold it as upright as possible already got a burr Let's see if that worked. And in all honesty, it could be the grind off just a little bit. It might be me. It might be the grind. Um, usually it comes out through the stones. Like if you just keep getting issues, no matter how much you adjust, it's usually because the grind is off. But you can obviously adjust to the grind. But... Um, Okay, I need to lay it back a little bit farther. I might just remark this finger a little bit lower. I'm going to do that because this might be off a little bit. Which I don't doubt. I, I run into that all the time. Let's try that. Could it be me? Absolutely. That's why we are adjusting. Okay. It's looking good. Not matched up yet, and I changed the angle quite a bit, but we're just gonna keep working at it. I actually already have a burr on the other side, all the way up and down, but I'm not done. So I'm going to keep working at this one because you wanna get all your issues out of your low grits because those are the ones that are gonna cut faster. You don't wanna deal with issues with a high grit. Even though my next grit is still a low grit, I'm probably not going to go very high with this grit because I think we will lose all the bite. Very similar to like CPM 154, S35DN. All right, our burr is getting pretty big, so we're going to chop it off. Let's just keep working on the stone for one second. Yeah, this is looking a little bit better. Man, I just can't, th this bevel right there is just a little bit bigger on the back. So I got most of it worked out. I'm gonna move the camera here in one second. So, 
my hand keeps hitting my microphone cord. And I want to give you guys a different angle. All right, man, it just looks so damn good. It looks so perfectly straight that I hate to keep adjusting. Nice and flat, it just looks perfect. But then this side, let me wipe it off. There's a burst, so I don't wanna get a bunch of tissue on it, but. It's not horribly off, but it is by a little bit. You probably can't see it unless if I go like this. It is off just a tiny bit right there. So, but I think it'll work itself out if I just keep going at it because it's pretty much straightening itself out. All right, so let me move this camera and we will flip the stone. We'll go to the next progression. All right, I always try to clean these off as good as possible before I put them up. The next, the next grit is going to be uh, oh, wait, no, this is my last one, sorry. It'll be this one, and it is 50 slash 40 microns. So this is the one that's almost 600 grit. Now the next one is 20 slash 14 micron. I don't know, 800, 1,000 grit, something like that. You know, what I thought it was, it is a little different when you look at the grit progression uh, ratio thing, but this is the thing is that there's so many different stones. Like if I say a thousand grit diamond versus a thousand grit aluminum oxide, the aluminum oxide is way finer than the diamond. The diamond is just, it's way more coarser. The, the grit patterns are way more pronounced. So it almost doesn't translate. And I think of diamond a lot. And I'm not sure what that that progression rating is like. If it's just very technical, I don't know. Um, but that's what Google said when I looked it up. I looked up uh, micron to grit rating. I've also heard other people tell me that it's different. Like, I don't know. I had one person tell me that this stone right here is like a 1200 grit. Four diamonds. Now this is still a pretty coarse grit, so anything I need to work out, I still can with this one, but I don't, I like to, when I'm at this point, to just be going right through my stones, like basically like I should already be done with it and going to my next stone, but I am trying to make sure these bevels are nice and even. Sorry if you guys can't see very well. Let me... Let me see if I can get you guys just a little bit closer. I don't want to keep hitting that damn cord. Let me go up a little bit. That should be okay. Let's look at it. How does it look? It looks pretty decent. The heel isn't perfect though. Yeah, there's no, this grind has got to be off because this angle is higher than my other side that is leaving a smaller bevel. I don't know, maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe it is even and I just messed it up from the start. 
tell you what, this crewer sharpens up really nicely, though. I do like the way it feels on the stone. It feels really good. I was getting great edge retention from the last edge, even though it didn't have a lot of bite. I mean, it wasn't really showing damage or anything. Just, I'm almost perfectly even. I don't want to flip without being perfect. You know, the last edge that was on here was really perfect, so it makes me think that the edge bevels are even, and it's just me at this point. Okay. Almost there. I personally like to lay back the edge just a little bit on the shaman because it is thick behind the edge. So it only benefits the cutting performance. That's looking good. That's looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go to the other side. I might flip it back to tune it up just a little bit more, but I'm not sure if we're gonna flip to the next stone or not. We possibly will. We will, and then if it doesn't do good, we'll go back. Something's on my stone. I don't know what that was. Still hitting this damn cord. Yeah, this side's going a lot faster. I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit more on it. Let me move this cord around there. Looking good, looking real good. All right, now I guess let's flip it and let's see if, oh, my stone's a little dirty on this side. Let me clean this really quick. Um, oh, I think that was just from it rubbing up against the other one. Anyways, um, yeah, let's, uh, Let's see how it does on this stone. I do not personally think, I think that if it does do good on this stone, I don't think it'll go good on the next one. I think this would be the last stone. So this is basically 20 slash 14 micron. It's basically like the beginning of the polish. So every stone after this is polished and this is the last one that will leave any grit. The next one would be seven slash five micron and three slash two micron. This one's the 20 slash 14 micron. After this, I got to go to the post office, do some mail outs, and then I got to come back and film one more video and actually a couple more videos because I got to, I'm going to get something up for the patron members. At least I'm going to try to. Um, and 
do some Instagram stuff. At least a post because I'm trying to keep up with all of them. Uh, the patrons I could wait till tomorrow on just because it hasn't been a week yet, but. And I got a lot of other stuff to do today, man. I still got to work out. Slow it down a little bit. Let's check it. Then if it's doing good, we'll go to the other side and then we'll see. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. There's a little bit. Sorry, a little bit at the heel. I'll show you the grit here in one second. Let me just even it out a little bit. So I'm trying to get right now, basically the heel right here as good as I can, as tight as I can to that plunge. But the thing is, is that that's going to show now since I'm going straight back and forth. So now what I have to do is I have to marry this edge I'm putting on right now, right here to this spot. So I'm trying, I'm going to have to marry this together now. And that's how I marry it. Blended and... Pretty good. It needs one more go around, but looks pretty good. I'm trying to make sure I feel for every motion and movement that I do going back and forth to simulate it over and over, to make sure I repeat it over and over. You, you wanna, cause it's so easy to change emotion. Not emotion, emotion, <laughs> and do it a little, um, just a, a microscopic difference, you know, it's so easy. And it come out um, different than what you're trying to get or with angle changing. I've showed videos on how you can see if your angle's changing and like different signs and what they mean and different things on the edge, what it's telling you it's doing. Maybe I should do another video like that again. I like to have multiple videos of the same, not the same exact video, but the same kind of video so that more people get to see it um, because I won't necessarily remember which video it was in or what the name of it was. This edge is definitely getting very flat. I can feel it. The flatter the edge is and um, the more consistent it is, you can feel it. Um, one, it goes across the stone easier. It slides easier. The sound is different. Kind of messed up right there at the end. Hopefully it doesn't show. Looking pretty good. I can see I got a little bit more blending to do, but what up? Yeah, I don't think this thing's gonna, I think we're gonna drop it back down already. I feel like that. I'm gonna hit this side, and if not, we're dropping it back down. Um, I already don't like the way it feels. 
I'm just going to hit it on this side a few times because I'm not going to waste my time. Okay, the bird's gone. Yeah, we're going back down. This is already, like, it's sharp, but the, I, can, I can just feel the bite is going away. Now, this would be the absolute peak of what I would want to do on this steel, if anything. But I'm going to get better performance by switching it back. So let's go back down. So this is kind of where I get my information on whether or not the, the steel is going to do good on a fine edge or not. Now, so by flipping over when I just did the side, you know, on the other side of the stone, I, the burr got knocked off. So right then, you know, it should have had more bite at the edge than it does. And yeah. I mean, it's still sharp, but it's not not to the performance that we want. So let's do this stone over again. Basically start from the beginning of this stone and we will do it again. I should have uh, tested the edge on paper before I start sharpening. I know I cut up some cardboard, but... Or at least I filmed cutting some cardboard, I mean. It's just a smaller than this other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other side, then go back to the other side. If you guys can't tell, I'm trying to hold my angle up just a little bit taller than it has been, just slightly. Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking really good. A lot better. Man, it looks so good. Um, I'm just going to hit it just a couple more times on this side, then we'll switch. Sometimes I don't like to do just one or two passes. The reason why is because when you go back on the stone from picking the blade up, your angle might be a tiny, tiny bit different. So the best thing to do is to just do like 10, 20 passes when you do it so that you can make it perfect. Or if you changed a little bit, it'll completely change to that new angle as much as possible. Damn, that looks good. All right, let's switch. We're going to go to the other side. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of work on the other side, then we'll knock the burr off. Holy shit, we are at 40 minutes. All right, let's do this quickly. I took my time just a little bit too much with this video. This looks really good. I could just stop right here, but I'm not happy. I want a little bit more. Just a little bit.
Okay, let's um, let's knock this burr off. Um, I'll just let me see if I can just do it on the ceramic rod and do it really quick. If it doesn't come right off, I'll put it back on the stone and do my three, two, one passes. Oh man, I can't get up to it. Let me get my other plate. That one won't let me. Or my other. See if we can get it here. Yeah, we're tight. Check it. Yeah, it's working. Very gently. I'm doing this extremely gently. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, I got the burr all the way off, but yeah, I, I'm going to hit it on a strop though, but even this, I mean, it's, it's, it's got a lot of bite. Don't get me wrong. It's got a lot of bite. I think it could be even a lower grip. I think this thing does good at 600 grit and under. I'm going to say between four and 600 grit because this is practically a 600 grit at least according to Google. I think it's a little bit higher than 600 grit personally, but let's um, let's check it out. Let's take a look at it. I'll um, strop it after this and then we'll cut some stuff up. I've got some paper at least. Maybe I should get this under better lighting. Still a little dirty. I still need to wash it, but let me, I'm going to switch the camera to a better lighting and we'll check this edge out. Now, if I would have went higher in grit, I wouldn't even need to strop at all. Technically, I really don't need to strop, but those veneed stones, you can come right off the stone without stropping, especially on the higher grits. Okay, let's test it. I'll rinse it off and then... very nice all right let me uh, i'm gonna hit it on the strap one more time just because i'm kind of a weirdo like that yeah just touch something it needs just one more little pass kind of weird like that man I, just because i cut paper <laughs> yeah i just it, it's nice it's you got a lot of bite to it i just feel like it could be just a little bit bitier even at this grit um I don't know a lot about crew wear, so let me just wash this. The marker off of it. Clean the edge off and we'll take a look at it. I know I could have edited this whole video out and I'm just gonna post it just like this, I don't care. Looks really good. Nice even grip pattern. Matched it up as good as possible from one side to the other. Should we zoom in a little bit? Yeah, looks good. And there you guys go. 
Um, my impression of crew wear, um, I think it has great edge retention. I like the steel a lot. I think it takes a toothy edge. I don't think it takes a mirror edge very good. Obviously, it will take a mirror edge. Like the mirror will go on there. It just won't have a lot of bite. Um, so I think to get the best out of this steel, I think it wants a toothy edge. Um, and it's not going to have probably good stain resistance or anything like that. So you're going to want to keep it clean and keep it dry and, you know, um, keep it away from acids and stuff like fruits. And, and if you do use it, make sure you clean it off right away. Um, the Shaman is a great knife. I have one of my own. Mine's an S30V. I love it. Um, they're just a great knife. I've, um, I've done videos on them and showed them in many videos and talked about them. They're just such a solid knife and they cut good because, well, the, it does have a thick blade stock and they're not thin behind the edge, but you have so much leverage into your cuts that it cuts good and it is a full flat grind. So on mine, I laid the edge back on mine. Let me show it really quick. So mine, you can see I laid my edge back pretty significant to get better cutting performance and you can see the edge angle difference how much bigger my bevel is compared to this one this thing cuts like a beast though and this edge gets wicked sharp i mean super duper sharp because it's so laid back it just has like it's like the teeth are so um big and so acute especially with such a flat angle and bevel um yeah it just this thing it cuts very good and it gets extremely sharp now in this case you know this isn't mine so i didn't lay the edge back i did lay the edge back a tiny bit but not obviously as much as mine but i guarantee it'll cut a little bit better and possibly even get better edge retention now um i would think because you know, it just didn't have no bite, so I got to imagine that if I continue to keep using it, it's just going to get duller and duller. It might not chip out or get, um, you know, problems in the edge, but it just, it'll get butter knifey, you know? So that's why I think that you want definitely some bite on your edge. I love you guys. Peace. Thanks again, Floridian.